Hi everybody, welcome to Sandra's Art Studio. Today we have a fun project and it's again on neurographic art. This is such an interesting form of art because we can actually set intentions, we can let go. There's all kinds of useful things we can do with this art. So today's project is going to be on how to set intentions, right? And this is what my project for today looks like. So it looks like a child did it for some people, and that's okay because you don't have to be an artist. And it turns out that each one of these shapes and each one of these colors, each one of these lines, everything means something with this type of art, right? So what we want to do is get all of our attention focus on the project that we have on hand. Last week, we did a project on how to let go. And this week, we're doing a project on how to replace those emotions that we are letting go or the patterns that we're letting go and we're replacing it with intentions. What do we want more in our life? So get ready, get a simple pad of paper. Uh, mixed media paper is really good for holding uh, a little bit of the watercolors if you're going to use watercolors, but you can use colors, you can use pastels, whatever you want. A simple marker, markers that don't spread if you're going to use watercolors, so keep that in mind. But it's simple, simple uh, materials that you may already have at home. So this one here is, I use it a lot, mixed media, right? And honestly, you know, just a simple marker like this one here. And I'm using some watercolors like this. Check out the list. Okay, that's it. So are you guys ready? Let's get started. So before you get started, you probably want to meditate and just clear your mind, okay? You may have a list of what your intentions are going to be on the side here, or if you have it in your head, that's fine. But let's, you know, meditate a little bit, like try to clear your head, have uh, silence, uh, don't let anybody disrupt, don't let your cell phone interrupt, okay? Just be in complete silence for a little bit. This This is a great exercise to just allow your mind to just get organized again. Okay, so once we get started, uh, after we've meditated, we get started. But for now, if you need to turn off this, uh, put this on pause for a good five minutes or whatever it is that you need, go ahead and do this because what we're doing here is setting intentions for what we want in our life. And we want to make it meaningful. We want it to have an impact. This form of art, is like hypnosis, believe it or not. It has a very sneaky way of talking to our subconscious. And that's what I love about this, because usually uh, our conscious is not all that conscious, believe it or not. We are, many times we're on auto mode, we're on auto drive, and a lot of times we don't remember what we even had for breakfast, okay? So this is a very good way to keep your mind focused on this project. First of all, this white piece of paper represents the field of all possibilities and probabilities. In the center, I want to draw a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And then what I'm doing is just doing some neural lines around it. I want to reinforce who I am on the field of possibilities and probabilities. I don't want that circle to be perfect. I want to work on these connections. And I'm doing this with my right hand if you feel like you want to focus a little bit more, I promise you that if you start using your left hand or your non-dominant hand, you will be a lot more present during the whole project. Next, I want to draw a representation of one of my resources on the field of possibilities and probabilities. And I actually have three resources in mind, and I'm going to put them all below me, which is the center circle on the field of possibilities and probabilities. So my first resource, I believe, is my curiosity. And yes, I'm going to do it in the form of a circle. The circles subconsciously are friendly. So we're going to use circles for this project. So you do the circle how big or how small you feel like you need to do it. This is the part that is intuitive and I'm trying to make more connections. I'm still using my left hand and so this first circle, it's going to be all about my curiosity. My second circle is going to be about my health. I put a lot of importance into my health and I'm very proud that I am very healthy. 
So whatever it is that you feel your resource is, I'm just letting you know how I came up with this one. This, the third resource I have, I believe, is my artistic abilities. And that's the last resource I'm going to draw. And of course, another circle. And I want to have lots of those neural lines around my circle because I want to make more connections. And the whole time that I am doing these circles and doing these connections, I want to keep my attention onto the project on hand. Okay, I don't want to let my mind drift on to what happened yesterday or 10 years ago or last night, whatever. You know, you just want to refocus your attention onto this project on hand. And I'm sorry about the little pop-ups, but unfortunately <laughs> on YouTube, this is how we advance. We need those notifications, those likes, those subscriptions. So if you feel like you're getting something out of this uh, video, please give me a like, subscribe, and hit the notifications. All right, so the next one is going to be the intentions that I want to set that I feel I could use more of in my life. Okay, these are the things that I'm replacing that I took away on last week's project. Last week's project was about letting go. This project now is about replacing and setting your intentions. So this particular circle here, for me is all about more compensation or compensation period, because right now on what I am doing, I don't feel like I'm getting compensated and it would be a lot more fun if I got compensated for the things I'm doing. And that circle, I want to give it a sign, a symbol. And this is the first symbol that I'm putting on, which is the money symbol. You can do it however you feel like, whatever speaks to you but I feel like the money symbol speaks to me and I always want more of it. So now that I did this symbol, I feel like I need to have a representation, a symbolic something into who I am on this field of possibilities and probabilities. And I think since the universe revolves around me, I do a little spiral in it. And then I said that that third circle I did below me, is my abilities, my artistic abilities. So I'm giving it an A. I don't really care for writing down things. I rather use symbols, but if writing down is better for you, then by all means do that. The circle that is right below me, I believe is my health. I, I put an H on the health uh, circle. And then the first one is about the curiosity that keeps me interested in two different subjects. If it wasn't for curiosity, uh, I would not learn different subjects, so I'm giving it a C, and this totally speaks to me. Of course, you use whatever works for you. It could be a little shape, or it could be just spell it out. Whatever works for you is fine. And back to my intentions, now that I have the symbols established, I want a circle to represent the thing that I want more, and that is going to be more connection with my intuition, more connection with the divine. For you, it could be more connection with God, uh, with Buddha, with, uh, you know, whatever it is that you are into, of course, do that. And it doesn't have to be about spiritualism. It could be something totally different. For me, this particular intention, I want it to be more connection with my intuition. And that's part of the reason why I have it overlapping myself the representation of who I am on this paper, and I'm giving it an I. Symbolically, I think that matches pretty good. So the next one I am doing, my next intention is to have a more connection with the people on my YouTube. I like my YouTube to finally start kicking in because I feel that uh, by having a community that we can build together through YouTube, we can help each other through YouTube, that this would be so much fun for me. And I've been working on my YouTube channel for like seven years. Granted, the first six years, I did not know what I was doing. I was just uploading uh, videos of me doing different art projects. And I thought that was enough, but it was not. And for me, having YouTube recognize me and put me out there on their algorithm for you guys to be able to see me, 
more and interact with me, that would be absolutely wonderful. I've been working on this for a while and I want it. So that's my third intention and my last intention. So these three intentions for me are a big deal. And whatever it is that you have on your intentions, by all means, uh, you can share it with everybody or you can keep it to yourself. Here, I feel like, you know, since I have a YouTube channel, I, I have to share it with you guys. That's what makes it more fun. Okay, so the last thing we want to do here is actually do these neural lines that are going to go across our resources, yourself, the representation of yourself on the field of possibilities and probabilities, which is this white piece of paper that we already have all of these symbolic representations of intentions. Okay, so you want to put those lines that are our connection lines to our resources, yourself, your intentions and out to the universe. So once it passes our intentions, it's out to uni the universe. So if you feel like your lines are not unpredictable enough, then maybe you wanna use this technique with a little stone where you have to guide the stone outside of the page and you're not going to be able to um, control that stone that well, right? So that's a good way of laying your lines or continue working with your non-dominant hand and you keep doing this until you're happy with the connections that you have. Once you have your page full of these neural lines that are connecting resources to ourselves, to our intentions and out to the universe, then you can start doing rounding of the corners. And what that is all about is making connections with all of these neural lines to each one of your intentions, each one of your resources, yourself and the universe. So now we want to connect each one of these intersections and subconsciously each crossing of the line is like a conflict. So we want to make it friendly and subconsciously uh, rounding is friendly. So you take each one of these crossings and you round the corners as you see I'm doing right here and you don't want to move the paper around you want to keep it in place because it forces you to stay a lot more focused. If you have everything where it's very comfortable for you to uh, draw your line and do the rounding of the corners, then you're going to be very comfortable and you can fall into this auto mode that we are trying to avoid because our tendency is to do things um, kind of repetitious, kind of like in a pattern like every day let's say we may wake up and have a cup of coffee and we may watch the news and we may know that mm, the news is not really that good for us but we have this pattern that we can't break out of so this is what i'm talking about auto mode where you are doing things automatically and then you don't really remember a single detail about what is it that you did let's say like when you drive home and you don't remember anything in particular about the drive home. You were not even drunk, but you just, you made it home and there was nothing interesting to get your attention. So that's why we want to keep ourselves uh, slightly uncomfortable. So don't move the pad of paper to where it's comfortable for you to do rounding of the corners. And for the sake of time, I'm speeding the video up. So that way you guys don't get bored on me. Now, when you are done with rounding the corners of each one of the crossing points, your entire project is going to resemble the actual neurons in our own brains, which is another one of those super fascinating aspects of the relationship that we have in between what we are doing on paper and what actually exists inside of us. Okay, now that we spend a few hours doing all the rounding of the corners, we are going to color this and I am using watercolor pencils. So basically you pick out four colors, your favorite colors or colors that mean something that represents something It can go by chakras or by association. So here I have four colors, red, purple, blue, yellow. You don't want to color each individual cell as its own. You want to integrate everything. So that's why I'm expanding the colors across the cells and I'm adding a little bit of, let's say red here and red there or purple here and purple there. Uh, you can do this totally intuitively, however you feel like it. And then once I have all the colors laid down, I'll go with my water 
and blend the colors a little bit better. And ta-da, there's my project. Now, before you're done, make sure you write on the back, date, what your intentions were, how this made you feel. If you have any extra notes, go for it. All of this is going to be very helpful when you look forward in six months and see if this made a difference for you. And hopefully by then, you and I are still in touch and you let me know how this affected your life. Alrighty, for now, thank you for watching and I hope I see you guys next Sunday. Bye.